unraveling time the fascinating worlds of gregorian islamic and jewish calendars throughout history humans have developed various ways to track time leading to the creation of different calendars today we will explore the unique features of three major calendars the gregorian islamic and jewish calendars let's start with the gregorian calendar the most widely used calendar in the world today this calendar was introduced by pope gregory the 13th in 1582 to fix some problems with the older julian calendar you see the earth takes about 365 days to go around the sun but it doesn't take exactly 365 days it actually takes about 365 and a quarter days which is 365 days plus 6 hours now those extra 6 hours each year might not seem like a big deal but over time they add up after 4 years those extra 6 hours become a full 24 hours or one whole day this is why we have a leap year every 4 years during a leap year we add an extra day to the calendar in february making it 29 days instead of 28 this extra day helps keep our calendar in sync with the earth's orbit around the sun so the gregorian calendar is designed to keep everything in balance making sure that our seasons stay consistent year after year this means that thanks to leap years holy days like christmas always happen around the same time each year the gregorian calendar has some big advantages that make it so popular first it's very accurate in keeping track of the seasons this accuracy is important for agriculture holidays and planning events second it's simple to understand with most years having 365 days and a leap year every 4 years because of these advantages the gregorian calendar is used internationally for most official purposes including business government and travel this means people all around the world can coordinate and communicate more easily because they are using the same calendar system the islamic calendar also known as the hijri calendar is a lunar calendar used primarily by muslims for religious purposes it was established in 622 ad marking the year of the prophet muhammad's migration from makkah to medina the islamic calendar consists of 12 lunar months totaling about 354 or 355 days This means Islamic months shift backward by about 10 to 12 days each Gregorian year. Let's talk about the lunar calendar. The word lunar comes from the Latin word for moon. And the lunar calendar is a type of calendar that is based on the cycles of the moon. Here's how it works. Number 1, moon phases. The moon goes through different phases as it orbits the earth. You might have noticed that sometimes the moon looks like a thin crescent sometimes it's a half moon and sometimes it's a full moon This cycle takes about 29.5 days Number 2 months In the lunar calendar each month starts with a new moon which is when the moon is completely dark and not visible from earth The month continues as the moon gets brighter becomes a full moon and then gets darker again until it's a new moon again this whole cycle takes about 29 or 30 days number 3 year length a lunar year is made up of 12 lunar months since each lunar month is about 29.5 days a lunar year is about 354 days long this is shorter than a solar year which is about 365.25 days long Number 4 moving through the seasons because a lunar year is about 11 days shorter than a solar year the months and holidays in a lunar calendar move backward through the seasons over time for example a holiday that happens in the winter one year might happen in the fall a few years later because the islamic calendar is based on the moon islamic holidays like ramadan and eid 
move through the seasons occurring at different times of the year over a period of about 33 years. Now why does it take about 33 years for these months and holidays to move all the way through the seasons and come back to the same time of year? Let's break it down. Number 1. Length of a year The Gregorian calendar year is about 365.25 days long. The Islamic calendar year is about 354 days long. Number 2. Difference each year Each year the Islamic calendar is about 11 days shorter than the Gregorian calendar. Number 3. Total days difference To find out how many years it takes for the Islamic calendar to cycle through the Gregorian calendar, we can divide the number of days in a year by the difference. If we take 365.25 days and divide by 11 days, we get about 33 years. So, in approximately 33 years, the 11 day difference adds up to a full year, causing Islamic months and holidays to move through all the seasons and eventually return to the same time of year. This is why, for example, the month of Ramadan and the holiday of Eid al Fitr will happen in different seasons over many years but will come back to the same season after about 33 years. Here are the names of the 12 months in the Islamic calendar. Muharram, the first month of the Islamic year considered sacred. Safar, the second month. Rabiul Awwal, the third month also known as Rabi 1. Rabi Thani, the fourth month also known as Rabi 2. Jamadi al Awwal, the fifth month also known as Jamadi 1. Jamadi Thani, the sixth month also known as Jamadi 2. Rajab, the seventh month, another sacred month. Shaban, the eighth month. Ramadan, the ninth month, famous for being the month of fasting. Shawwal, the tenth month, which starts with the festival of Eid al Fitr. Zul Qada, the eleventh month, another sacred month. Zul Hijjah, the twelfth month, which includes the pilgrimage of Hajj and the festival of Eid al Adha. In the Islamic calendar, the days of the week are similar to those in the Gregorian calendar but they have different names in Arabic. Here are the days of the week in the Islamic calendar. Yawm al-Ahad, Sunday. Yawm al Monday. Yawm al Tuesday. Yawm al Wednesday. Yawm al Thursday. Yawm al Friday. This is the most important day of the week for Muslims, similar to Sunday in Christianity, as it is the day of communal prayers. Yom Sab, Saturday. These names reflect both the order of the days and their significance in Islamic culture. Friday, in particular, is a special day for congregational prayers and is considered a day of rest and reflection. Next, we have the Jewish calendar which is a bit different and special because it is a lunisolar calendar. This means it uses both the moon and the sun to keep track of time. Jewish communities all around the world use this calendar for their religious and cultural events. Here's how it works. Number 1. Lunar Months Just like the Islamic calendar, the Jewish calendar has months based on the cycles of the moon. Each month starts with a new moon and lasts about 29 or 30 days. Number 2. Solar Year The Jewish calendar also pays attention to the sun, making sure that the months stay in the same seasons each year. This is important because many Jewish holidays are connected to specific times of the year, like Passover, which needs to happen in the spring. Number 3. Leap Years To keep everything in sync, the Jewish calendar has a clever way of adding extra time. A regular Jewish year has 12 months. But in a leap year, an extra month is added. This extra month is called Ada 2. Leap years happen 7 times in a 19 year cycle. This way, the Jewish holidays always occur in the same season each year. The 19 year cycle. To keep everything lined up, the Jewish calendar uses a special pattern over 19 years. Here's how it works. Number 1. 19 year cycle. Imagine a big loop of 19 years. In this loop, there are 7 years that are leap years. 
This means we add the extra month, Ada to, in these seven years. Number two, pattern. The leap years happen in a pattern. In a 19 year cycle, the leap years are the third, sixth, eighth, eleventh, fourteenth, seventeenth, and nineteenth years where the extra month is added. Here are the names of the months in the Jewish calendar, including the extra month. Tishri, the first month, which includes important holidays like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Cheshman, the second month. Kislev, the third month, which includes Hanukkah. Tevet, the fourth month. Shevet, the fifth month. Adar, the sixth month, which includes Purim. In a leap year, this month is called Adar 1. Adar 2, the extra month added in a leap year. Leap years happen seven times in a 19 year cycle. Nisan, the seventh month, which includes Passover. Ayer, the eighth month. Sivan, the ninth month, which includes Shavuot. Tammuz, the tenth month. Avnida, the eleventh month. Elul, the twelfth month. In the Jewish calendar, the days of the week are also named differently compared to the Gregorian calendar. Here are the days of the week in the Jewish calendar. Yom Rishon, Sunday, literally first day. Yom Sheni, Monday, literally second day. Yom Shlishi, Tuesday, literally third day. Yom Ravi, Wednesday, literally fourth day. Yom Chamishi, Thursday, literally fifth day. Yom Shishi, Friday, literally sixth day. Yom Shabbat, Saturday. Shabbat, the Sabbath, the most important day of the week, a day of rest and spiritual enrichment. These names reflect the ordinal position of each day in the week, with Shabbat being the culmination of the week observed from Friday evening to Saturday evening. Shabbat is a time for rest, family, prayer and reflection in Jewish tradition. While the Gregorian calendar is primarily based on the sun and the Islamic calendar is based on the moon, the Jewish calendar combines both elements. This unique combination ensures that Jewish holidays always occur in the same season each year, keeping everything in balance. These calendars also dictate the timing of important religious holidays. For example, Easter in the Gregorian calendar, Ramadan in the Islamic calendar, and Passover in the Jewish calendar all depend on the respective calendar systems. Despite their differences, these calendars reflect the rich cultural and religious diversity of our world. They remind us of humanity's shared desire to understand and measure the passage of time. Each calendar with its unique methods and historical significance offers a glimpse into the values and traditions of the cultures that created them. By learning about these different systems, we gain a deeper appreciation for the ways in which people from various backgrounds have navigated the rhythms of life. Ultimately, these calendars not only help us keep track of days and seasons, but also connect us to the broader human experience celebrating our collective journey through time.